Hello and welcome to In the Classroom, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. Today I wanted to spend uh, a few minutes talking about Notion and how I'm currently using Notion. I had a couple of um, uh, responses, a couple of comments related to how I was using uh, some of the databases. Some of the comments made to prior videos that I've made about Notion, uh, they were really looking at different ways that I was using Notion at the time. So I wanted to provide an update on how I'm currently using Notion and talk about specifically uh, certain databases that I'm using and how I'm structuring and how I'm structuring those for a particular class that I'm teaching this semester and also uh, some different ways that I'm view viewing the content for this class. So to provide some context this semester, this fall 2020 semester, uh, I am uh, teaching a course in listening and speaking, and this is for English language learners at an A1 to A2 English proficiency level. And I'm currently using Microsoft Teams to uh, house or to, uh, to keep all the information that I'm using for files and online classes. Basically, everything is residing within this platform. Students can also contact me one-on-one -on -one via the chat feature. So I really like this platform and will continue using it for the rest of this semester. It's uh, also very nice on the mobile uh, devices, sp uh, specifically cell phones, as many students are using their cell phones to access course content and to maintain communication not only with me, but also their classmates. So again, this is a platform that we'll continue using. We also uh, break out into rooms quite frequently for small group activities. And um, again, this will be something that we'll uh, continue using throughout the semester. But the idea of using Notion is to organize the course content, the activities, the lessons, the assignments, and to try to offer a different way uh, for students to access this course content. As we've now completed eight weeks, we've done a lot of different activities and we've talked a lot about a lot of different things. So I wanted to offer uh, a good way for them, an organized way for them to access the course content that we've completed thus far this semester. So this probably is one way, one thing that lags, um, that lacks here in this platform in Microsoft Teams. You could set up a OneNote for that purpose, but one of the reasons why I like Notion is that uh, I can also share this with the public. And that's uh, one of the, the main things that attracted me was finding ways for my students who are enrolled in a course with me at the university that they also um, see that this much of the same content that we're interacting with is also being made public. Not all of the content, not all of the activities that they're doing, but a lot of what we're doing is being shared publicly. So here we see that I have, have created a course page, a syllabus page, and this came from actually a template from Notion. They have a lot of really good templates that uh, provide a good way for someone to get started in, in populating a, a page. And in this case, I used a syllabus template and modified it a little bit. And uh, this is how it currently appears. Now, it is important to realize that uh, today is October 17th, 2020. And on Monday, we're going to begin week nine. So depending on when you're watching this video, uh, you could expect a lot of changes to what I'm sharing with you here today, depending on when you're viewing this video. But here we have basic information about the course. I've also included as a PDF the entire official syllabus. But here, uh, some of this information is in the form of links. This semester, we're using a lot of Flipgrid. So I've embedded the, um, the group, the Flipgrid group, where they can find individual topics that we're completing throughout the semester. We'll look at some of those topics as lessons here here in a second. I've also included links and uh, here we have some links to different pages or information that we talk about in class and then the schedule. 
Now the schedule I've organized basically into two different views, a calendar view, a monthly view, as you can see here. And if you click today, this will take you to today's date. And you can see day to day the different, uh, the different lessons and different uh, activities and assignments that we've completed. We'll come back to looking at uh, that a little bit more specifically here in a second. And just below the calendar view, you'll see the same content, but org organized in a table format with certain properties or columns that relate again to the different types of activities that we have done in, in class. This is specifically related to assignments because I wanted to provide at a glance the, the assignments that they can access so that they can try to keep up with uh, the different assignments. And so we basically have a calendar view that has all the types of activities that we do in the class and then a second table that lists only the assignments. And then we have just basic information about the grading system and uh, some notes about, about submitting the assignments. All right, now, if you are familiar with uh, Notion, you have ways of linking databases. And you can see by this arrow here that this is actually a linked database, as is this is a linked database. It's the same database, LNS, listening and speaking content, or LNS1 content, and LS, LNS1 content. This, these are exactly the same databases but again, with different views. Now, if I were to click on this link, this is gonna take me to the, the, um, the uh, database itself. Okay, so this is where the database resides. You'll notice there's a difference here in the breadcrumbs as listed here, it's under tasks. If I go back to the page we were just looking at, you'll notice this is a completely different uh, breadcrumb. All right, so again, this is a link, these are linked databases. Click here, and this goes directly to uh, the database. Now, we can also compare these two different databases. Again, even though they're the same database, that is, they have the same content exactly, uh, they, are, um, they appear different. And how do they appear? Here, they, we have a published, these are different properties here that I've listed, published name, date, category, type, module, which is essentially the week in which we're doing that particular activity, and the unit. Okay, so this is how this database appears. Published is simply a way for me to check and or toggle back and forth between whether or not I want this content published or not. This allows me to prepare for up and coming lessons and activities and add information to this database, but not make it available to the students. And again, all I need to do is select this option, this box, if I want this to be viewable to the students. This is the reason why I've set this up in this way, so that I could have a database here that uh, I, I, it gives me the option of publishing or not publishing it. So when you look at, or when the students look at this course content here, all of this information in this calendar view and also in the assignments view have been set as published. But notice that the properties are different. In this case, for assignments, I, I'm using the name, the date, module, unit, category, and tag. And that's, that's basically it. That's different. Notice that I don't have the assignments property or a column for assignments because obviously this is already sorted by assignments. So notice I have a filter and a sort. And in, in this case, the sort, let's do filter first. Uh, the filter is set as assignment. Since this is an assignments view, I'm only including the type the, that are listed as assignments. If I were to scroll down here, notice that I have other options that I could have chosen. But again, the reason for this view was just to list assignments. So I've selected assignments here, and that's it. And then I wanted to sort it by date so that the most recent assignments appear towards the top of the table. So I just have a very simple sort. Of course, I could be 
I could get more uh, sophisticated in the way that I sort the information, but for me, this is, this is uh, good enough. So here we have the assignments, and that's why this is different here. If I go to properties, uh, let's see here. Um, no, let me go back to the original chain here. Now under properties, this is where I can select which properties that I want to include in this view. So again, the views are independent to the actual content in each of these. When you're linking it across pages, the same database, you have a lot of options as to which properties you want to include in each view, how you want to sort, and how you want to filter each of these. And again, this just provides different ways of viewing the same content depending on uh, the purpose. So this is basically how I set this up. If we go into now an individual assignment, let's go into this. This is a podcast that students were asked to complete. This is for week eight. This is going to be their sixth episode. And here we have general information. Um, since I'm just now moving content over and trying to populate this information, there's still a lot more I could do in terms of presenting the information, right? You could have instructions here. I could have a lot more detail in what I've included so far, but you can see, you know, what the options are here in terms of what you can include both in the in text form. You could embed videos and, and audio and uh, really make this a lot more robust than how it currently appears here. Notice that the, each one of these lessons, you can establish different properties that are associated with those assignments. So in this case, I've assigned a date and I have here type, we mentioned that earlier. So a lesson, assignment, exam, discussion, or a page. The categories here, I have one category for Flipgrid, one for podcast, one for class, right? And I could, uh, these are categories I can multiple, I could select various options in this case. If uh, students were in class doing a, uh, a problem-based learning type of activity, or if it was more reflective in nature, or if it was more related to listening or speaking, I could also select those options as well to add more um, more detail to the type of activity that this happens to be. Module is simply the week. So this semester we have 16 weeks and I'm just indicating which week that we're completing this the task. Here I can indicate whether or not I want this published and, and then the unit. We have four units for this particular course and I can indicate the unit here. And for right now, that's basically, that's basically it. So again, each one of these uh, pieces of information, the lesson, the assignments, the discussions, um, they're all working from the same database, but these are just basically different views. And so far I've got basically, I've got three views, an assignment view and a calendar view for the students. And then the original view that I use for adding content. And it's as easy as clicking new here and going in and adding a new piece of information to this course. Okay, and that's basically it. Notice here you can easily delete, move information around. I could sort this however I want by providing different sorting options, filtering options, and I can again list the pro their properties. If, if it's not really necessary to show all the properties here, I could indicate that in this space right here. So I hope this helps uh, to provide a little bit more in detail. I'm currently using uh, Notion. The, uh, there, are a lot, there are a lot of different ways that you can integrate these different databases, but for, for right now, uh, this is how I'm doing it. And again, one of the key features that, uh, that I'm trying to achieve is having the option of publishing content or not publishing content 
making it available to my students when when I uh, you know when I want them to have access to it. For right now, I'm keeping all of the content available throughout the semester, but there might be cases where depending on the course, depending on the maturity level of the students and how used to their, they are accessing content online, I could see where it might be useful to publish and unpublish content throughout the semester so that only certain uh, pieces of information or lessons are viewable at any given time. So that might also be appropriate for, for some classes, for some students where maybe having all of this information available might be confusing to the students or it might interfere with, uh, you know, working with the content. But that's going to be a decision up to the instructor, of course, and, and, and uh, given the, the context of, of the course. But again, I wanted to share with you how I'm currently using Notion. If anyone has any suggestions about using uh, these databases in the way that I've been uh, sharing here, please uh, let me know. One of the things that I in fact, am going to submit to Notion as a, as a question really is finding a way to respect the same breadcrumb that they have access to these views. For example, right now you'll notice that I have this breadcrumb here and I want to maintain this because this is again a public space. This is a public a way for my students and, and others to access this information. But if they go to any of the assignments and they open up this assignment, notice that the breadcrumb changes. And this is what I'd like to avoid if possible. I would like to have students access this content, these, uh, these different sub pages, but still maintain the same breadcrumb and still be able to publish and unpublish the same content as I as I want. So I have yet to find a way to do that. If I can find a way, or if I get a response back from Notion about how to do that, I'll also share uh, that. But if anyone has any suggestions about how to do that, uh, please let me know. You can respond uh, either to this video or you can reach out to me via Twitter. My handle's at B-N-L-E-E-Z. This has been In the Classroom, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. Thanks for watching.